Hello? Oh, and welcome back. So, oh man. So in the last uh, few videos, we were sort of setting up the data to run an ANOVA. We ran an ANOVA. Uh, we created an ANOVA model. Uh, and then we had to check just to make sure that we uh, could trust the, the results, or at least the conclusion we're about to make. If these plots, if, well, if this plot right here doesn't look good, uh, maybe there's a pattern uh, sort of fanning outward, or one of the groups is really, really clumped along this zero line, but the other ones are, you know, uh, really spread out. Uh, that's an issue, right? So we want to check for those kind of things. We want to look at the distribution of our residuals just to make sure that they are normally distributed and we're not going to be over or underestimating uh, any of our estimates we're making for the population. Okay. Oh boy. Now ANOVA, again, I'm sounding like a broken record, but ANOVA only answers the question, is there at least one different group between all of the groups that we have? Okay. And in the NOVA that we have, the answer is yes. We know that there is at least one different group. Okay. Uh, as far as uh, pairwise comparisons go. All right. So let me go, let me just kind of go back uh, to this plot. And you're going to see me fumble here because yes. Okay, <laughs> cool. So what we're doing, what we're comparing now or next is this group to this group, beef high protein to cereal with high protein so on and so forth, right? And then we wanna compare beef with low protein to all the other ones we haven't compared yet and then cereal, right? So that's one, two, three, four, five, six comparisons. That's a lot, okay? Because we, we just, we're just doing it by the pairs after the ANOVA tells us that there is at least one of them different, right? How do we do that? How do we do that? Well, that's what uh, old Ronald Fisher here was wondering too. He was the guy who created the ANOVA uh, in, a, in a pretty elegant way, it, it's, it's pretty strong. But what we next need to do is this. We need to take every combination, pairwise combination of groups and compare them, right? We need to do that. Now, theoretically, you could do a t-test for, you could do six t-tests in this case. Um, one, that's not that fun. Two, that would take a long time. Uh, and then three, there is sort of a statistical rule here, I'll say, uh, that, that makes this kind of tricky, okay? Right now, in the end, uh, the sort of long and short of it is that the more comparisons you make, the more t-test, if, if you were to do a bunch of t-test, the more likely you are to make a wrong conclusion about uh, the statistical significance of that comparison you're making, okay? Now that kind of goes in, into some math theory uh, just talking about the more events you see, the more likely you are to see a rare event. Um, again, I don't so much care for that definition, at least in this class. But we can't, we can't just do t-test. It's going to take a long time. It's a pain in the ass, uh, and we might accidentally make a conclusion uh, that is not necessarily um, true to reality. Okay, and of course, you know, maybe six t-tests. It's not a lot. Um, it's only six lines of code. You might forget one or, or something, uh, but if we were making, you know, a comparison between, you know, incomes across every state in the U.S., well, that's not 50 comparisons. That's a bunch of comparisons. That's uh, Wyoming to Colorado, Wyoming to Montana, Wyoming to, and you can kind of see where it goes, right? You have to do every combination of one-on-one uh, -on -one tests like that. So what do we do? Well, thankfully, these, well, these two people were on it. I just put FDR here because of the name. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're going to be uh, using these three tests in this class. Uh, again, they all do the same thing, and they all uh, have their own kind of sets of rules and pros and cons uh, within each. Um, but you kind of have a choice. Uh, we're going to be going over Tukey's Honest Significant Differences by John Tukey here. Cool guy. Um, that's my favorite. And I'll tell you why in a little bit. And then we're also going to go over Bonferroni correction. This one is the simplest to do, uh, but has its own kind of uh, quarrels and qualms. Uh, and then we have false discovery rate, which is uh, not done by FDR, but it's called FDR. Um, there are literally dozens of other tests we could do. Uh, these are the most popular, uh, at least from what I found. Uh, and oftentimes these are kind of the easiest to wrap your head around. So, so 
let's go ahead and, and talk uh, a bit about Tukey, old John Tukey here, and, uh, and his HSD test, his honest significant differences. Just like T tests and just like ANOVA, we have to make some assumptions. We have to kind of follow some rules here. Thankfully, though, these assumptions follow the same assumptions that ANOVA do. So if our uh, ANOVA assumptions are met, then our post hoc comparison, that's a little bit of Latin, uh, our after the fact tests um, are, are also met. Those assumptions are also met. So that's, so that's good. Okay. Um, so how do, we, how do we implement this? How do we uh, do this? Well, thankfully, uh, it's just a single line of code. Uh, two, if you want to save it as something. So let's just go back to R here. And let's do some um, Tukey HSD. So we'll just call it Tukey HSD. Post hoc Latin for after the fact comparison. Very cool. OK, I'm giving myself some more room here. Bunch of room. Very cool. So just like in the PowerPoint, which I've got right here, um, it's this function. So left-hand side, we could call whatever we want. Uh, right-hand side requires, um, you know, proper spelling and everything. So if I just say, I just want to see the um, two key comparison, I'll, I'll call it T comp for now. Uh, and it's going to get, and then this function. Now, this function is kind of weird um, just in the way that it's spelled. Most functions in R um, don't have upper and lowercase letters. It's either one or the other. Uh, in this case, it's a mix of both. So do make sure that you get the capital T and Tukey and HSD for honest significant differences. Okay. And the only thing we need to put in there is our model, our, our, our ANOVA model. And if I hit uh, tab here, it's this first argument. So X equals, I have in the code, in the, in the PowerPoint code, um, you, don't, you don't necessarily need to do that. If, if it's the first thing and the only thing, um, in here, it'll assume that it's taking the place of the first argument. Anyway, just a little thing. So if I control enter, if I run that and then type in this, what do we get? Oh my gosh. Check it out. We get one, two, three, four, five, six comparisons. And if I, let me see if I even have this. Oh my gosh. Just give me a moment. Feel free to fast forward through this. Nope. Nope. Yes. <laughs> There, very cool. So it's just in the background, all by itself and very quickly too, it is making a comparison between each one of these groups. Okay, every single combination of comparisons we can make, pairwise comparisons we can make. Okay, now essentially it's doing a t-test. However, like I mentioned, the more events we observe, the more likely we are to make a false claim about something whether that there is a difference or there isn't, okay? That just kind of goes back to um, a little bit of theory that we're not going to bother ourselves with for this class since it's an applied class. Um, but you'll notice here that this ADJ next to the P value, that's we're still working with P values, this ADJ just means that it's adjusted for the fact that we're making a bunch of comparisons, okay? The math on how it does it, no biggie. Uh, the reason why is, again, just because the more stuff we see, the more likely it is we'll accidentally make a wrong conclusion. So we're able to adjust for that fact, okay? Very cool, so we don't have to worry about um, you know, making any wrong conclusions here. So we get a difference. That's just the mean difference. So the mean of beef high protein um, and the beef with low protein, that's that difference in grams. And it's done in this order. So it's beef low protein minus the mean of beef high protein. We get a confidence interval and check it out. Then we get all of our p-values here. Okay, so what does this tell us? Do we have any p-values under 0.05? Yes, and in fact, we just have this one right here. All of the other ones are, are decently large. Okay, so this one is like almost one. Um, this one is like fairly large. This one here, this comparison between cereal low protein and beef with high protein um, is kind of close to 0.05, but again, not enough for us to care about. That difference, uh, the, the biggest difference, the most statistically significant difference we see here is the comparison between beef with low protein and beef with high protein, okay? And we can see that reflected here in the plot, okay? Now, 
the super nice thing about this is that these conclusions we make here are the same as we do in t-tests, okay? Or as they are in t-tests, okay? So when we're just looking at these pairwise comparisons, now the question is, you know, is there a statistical significant difference between these two things? And the answer is yes. Okay, so the difference in these two means is uh, 20.8. I like to have the box plot next to this output just so I can kind of get the directionality here. Um, so on average, based on our sample, beef with low protein, uh, rats with beef, <laughs> rats who eat beef with low protein are on average uh, 20.8 grams uh, lighter, I'll say, than rats who eat a low protein diet that comes from beef, okay? However, we don't necessarily care so much about that when we are making inference about the population. We care about this. And this turns out to be the same interpretation as a 95% confidence interval for the difference in the means. We have this LWR, stands for lower, uh, lower bound of our confidence interval, and we have an upper UPR, upper bound for our 95% confidence interval. So based on these data that we have here, based on our ANOVA and then subsequent post hoc two key multiple comparisons of means tests or honest significant differences test, we're able to say that there's a 95% chance that the mean uh, difference between these two populations, rats who eat a low protein diet from beef and of rats who eat a high protein diet from beef, beef, not beets, beef. There's a 95% chance that that difference in weight is contained in this interval, okay? Very, very cool, I think. I think that's awesome that we can do that, right? Notice that this interval does not contain zero like the other intervals do, right? So if the confidence interval contains zero, uh, our p-value is going to be uh, insignificant, statistically insignificant, right? If our p-value is statistically insignificant, the confidence interval is going to contain zero, right? Um, again, the, the kind of interpretation here still is the same for uh, insignificant results, right? We're just saying there's a 95% chance that that difference is zero between these two groups, right? So in this whole thing here, in this whole thing, based on this specific test, okay, based on this specific test, we're able to say that beef high protein and beef with low protein are the only statistically significant differences here, okay? We are not able to say the same for any of the other comparisons, okay? We are not able to say that. We are only able to claim that these two things are different. And I know it's a little kind of mind warping, um, but the way that the kind of language here works, since these three here are not statistically significantly different as done, uh, as, as shown here, uh, we can't say necessarily that beef with high protein is different than these two as well. We are only, 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 only able to infer about these two things, okay? And that's that. Oh my gosh. So no checking of uh, assumptions because they were already met from the ANOVA side of things. Uh, and we just run this single line here and we are able to get essentially an adjusted t-test for every single comparison. We get a nice kind of layout here. This is, this is my favorite because of this. Uh, it gives us pretty much all the information we need, I th which I think is awesome. Okay, so let me, let me go back to the old PowerPoint here. Yeah, look at that. So it's, it's all there for you. It's all there for you. Got some, um, nope, nope, that's it. <laughs> so I'm going to pause the video now uh, or start a new one and we'll go over the other uh, post hoc comparison tests in a moment. And I'll see you there, oh, I guess in just a second.